So this is not the video that I actually set out to make. In the last two days, I've done hours of research, written a full script and planned loads of B-roll. Then just as I was about to turn my camera on and start filming, I paused. Instead of jumping into the film, I decided to run a mini experiment to see what people thought about the main concept I was talking about, MVPs or minimum viable products. I posted this on Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn and asked for people's views. Now, I've been pretty inactive on Twitter and Instagram recently, so it's pretty much crickets there. But LinkedIn started to work. I was getting loads of different opinions about what people thought about my slightly provocative description. And it turned out that my hunch that everyone has a different opinion was actually proving out. The problem was that it made me question my view even more. So the rest of this video, I'm going to try and help us, us all, figure out WTF and MVP really is, and more importantly, why it matters. Okay, let's start at the start. MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product. And whilst it has origins with Frank Robinson and Steve Blank, it was Eric Ries who popularized the concept and brought it to life in the seminal book, The Lean Startup. And Eric Ries described it as a version of a new product which allows a team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about customers with the least effort. It's essentially the output of the build, measure, learn loop that enables you to validate your biggest leap of faith assumptions as quickly as possible. Now, all of that sounds pretty reasonable, but it still doesn't describe what it is and what it's not. So for some people, an MVP is a feature-packed first product built over months or even years. Some, however, consider it to be a high fidelity, clickable digital prototype, while for others still, it's a simple landing page. And whilst all of these are great approaches to experimenting, I don't think they're actually MVPs. In fact, I actually disagree with Eric Reese here, dare I say it. In his 2009 blog, he said, despite the name, it's not about creating minimal products. He goes on to say that MVPs could be as simple as a landing page with ads to drive traffic to see if people want it. Now for me, this isn't an MVP. It's an experiment, of course. In fact, it's a great experiment, but that doesn't make it an MVP. And that's because a product should solve an actual problem for users. A landing page doesn't solve a problem. At best, it explains how the problem might be solved. So for me, it's not an MVP. So what is an MVP? First, let's go back to these three all important words, minimum viable product. First, in my opinion, it has to be a product. In other words, an item or service that you sell to serve a customer's needs or wants. Secondly, it has to be viable. Now this, strangely, was one of the most divisive points in the mini experiment that I did. And what do we actually mean by viable? Do we mean a viable product, a thing that works or functions? Or do we mean a viable business, a thing that generates profit or value? This is where I am the most torn. On one hand, I think you need to validate that the product does actually solve a customer challenge. But on the other hand, everything I see and read about viability is about business viability. That means it generates or has the potential to generate more revenue than it costs to create or deliver. Now, finally, it has to be the minimum version of the product. This seemed less contentious with people who replied to my mini experiment, but it's something that I've seen countless times and people get it wrong all the time. So my definition, as I posted on LinkedIn, on Twitter and on Instagram was the simplest version of a product that allows teams to evaluate its potential to provide sustainable income by satisfying a user's need. But based on the feedback from Mark, Fox, Vaughan, Martin, Ross and others, I changed it to say the simplest version of a product that enables you to evaluate its potential to create, capture and deliver value by addressing a real world need. 
Now, I feel really happy about leaving out the part about sustainable income as income is down to so many other factors, positioning, marketing, price, but also because income isn't the only measure of a good product and value is probably a much better thing to add in. So in this instance, viability is about learning if the thing creates and delivers value to the user and captures value for the organization. Okay, finally, I feel happy with this definition, but that still might not help you with what you need to do. In fact, there's an additional issue that I have with the perception of MVPs. People seem to think that you just need to build one single MVP, that by some sort of magic, just the process of building an MVP is enough and that you can now happily tick off that experiment phase. Now, people seem to think that the purpose of an MVP is really building version one of the thing, but it's not. The purpose of MVPs, as Eric Ries called it, is validated learning. Does the product create, capture, and deliver value? And you can only determine this, I think, by running an experiment or ideally a series of experiments. So the MVP is only part of the story. In fact, the MVP is purely a tool that enables you to learn. This tool can take on a number of different forms. You could build an app with a single feature, starting with the most important feature that you think will provide the most value. Equally, you can manually solve the problem without any code, either with your users knowing that there's no app with a concierge or a service MVP, or with a Wizard of Oz MVP, which makes it look like there's an application, but somehow it's all done behind the scenes, magically out of view of the user. A lot of my MVPs now start off life as a spreadsheet, and considering I'm a designer, that seems pretty wild. But these ugly but functional starting points are a great way to find out if the problem is substantial enough for people to still want to use it, even though the experience is awful. So what does all of this mean? Minimum viable products are great if they're used to actually learn, but they should be used as one approach to validating the assumptions that you have. In addition to creating an MVP, you should run multiple other tests, depending on what your most important and riskiest assumptions are. These could include storyboards, interviews or surveys, landing page tests, price page tests, mock sales, high fidelity prototypes, and many, many more. So next time someone starts talking about MVPs, turn the conversation to what you're seeking to learn and ask if an MVP is the right tool for the job. Thank you so much for listening and watching this far. This is one video in a series that I'm doing about business concepts, particularly innovation concepts that people often get wrong. And I'm trying to give you a little bit of clarity about these concepts that I think are brilliant, but often misunderstood so that you can improve your business, improve yourself, improve your product, or even in some way, shape or form, improve the world just a little bit. Now, if you feel like you've got a bit of value from this, please consider liking and subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you saw this on LinkedIn, go over to my YouTube. There's a whole load of other things there. The whole kind of back catalogue about all the videos that I'm doing is over there as well. One final exam question for you to see if you've really been listening. I ran an experiment before creating this video. Was that an MVP or not? Thanks so much. I'll catch you next time.